Hello YouTube, Ready Reptiles here with another video and in today's video I'm going to be talking to you about the radiated tortoise. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and let's get started. Alright guys, so in my hand right here is a young radiated tortoise. I have three of these little guys and I am raising them up so one day in the future I will be able to breed them and put more on the planet and you know continue to strengthen their captive population in hopes of one day repopulating their native habitat how they once were years before so this animal right here is commonly known as the radiated tortoise their scientific name is astrocellis radiata and these animals come from the southern western part of madagascar so this is the island in general and on the very bottom towards the south on the tip by the coast is where you will find these animals now their habitat consists of shrubland areas marine coastal areas and it goes obviously into the lowlands They're they're also been known to be found in the plateaus as well and uh, it's a very shrublanded area and uh, you know the vegetation that is in that area is a uh, spiny uh, spinier vegetation so cactuses and you know rougher edge plants things of that sort so this animal just like most grassland species such as your cicadas, leopards, aldabras, galapagoses, are an animal that uh, consists of a diet that needs to be higher in fiber, lower in protein. So you're obviously feeding it mostly haze, mostly higher fiber things such as Missouri LS tortoise diet, uh, alfalfa hay, orchard grasses, which I feed is which I prefer. And then obviously you supplement their diet with specific greens such as romaine lettuce, green leaf lettuce, red leaf lettuce, escarole, mulberry leaves, hibiscus leaves, hibiscus flowers, apuntia cactus is great. And then obviously since it's a higher fiber animal, you do not want to you want to avoid proteins such as spinach and your heartier protein things there. So here's one of my radiated tortoises. Here's another one that I have. This is 11. This one right here is hopper. And uh, I also want to share this little tiny guy that I just got is a uh, flare. And uh, this little one here is obviously just about a week and a half old. It still has its egg tooth, if you guys can see that. And uh, what's cool about this is that since they're an animal that comes from an island, uh, most, pretty much all island animals are considered endangered off the bat and a vulnerable species but radiant tortoises in general are critically endangered animals and what that means is this this animal is facing a severe decline in its population in its native range now you may ask me why are there so many um, problems consisting with this animal why is their native range declining so drastically and that's due to many reasons but uh, obviously reasons that we do know reasons that we don't know but they're mostly caused by humans and uh, that being said it's poaching illegal trafficking uh, smuggling for the pet trade a lot of these animals are collected in their native range and then brought over to countries such as China and uh, you know continents such as Asia for aphrodisiacs uh, aphrodisiac for those that don't know is they use these animals they think the beauty that the animal portrays will help them in a supernatural way and kind of enforce them into something that really won't do anything same thing with uh, rhino horns and elephant tusks but the radiated tortoise another reason is poaching a lot of people in their native habitat you know this is what they do for their living and it's kind of understandable that you know the native madagascar people obviously have to do what they need to do to survive by all means whether that is eating the actual radiated tortoise which is unfortunate as well or it's poaching them for export and, and uh, things of that sort like i explained uh, one of the most famous cases of uh, export uh, or a smuggling case that they caught was about two years ago in 2018 they found 10,000 adult radiated tortoises you know a range of sizes of course adults young ones not uh, obviously not too little ones but they were bigger tortoises and they found these animals inside a abandoned house in Madagascar so what that means is that they never found those animals about 10,000 of those guys would have made it out into who knows where and unfortunately since the conditions were so drastic and so bad uh, most of them you know made it but a lot of them did not make it due to them being sick and obviously spread of disease and things of that sort so that brings me to another topic that I want to talk about with uh, you know the decline the declining population of these tortoises and that is a uh, spread of disease since it is an island and like I said most things and pretty much all things are considered vulnerable when they are on an island whether that be Galapagos iguanas Galapagos tortoises aldabras things of that sort uh, islands obviously it are, are more immune and uh, not immune but are more prone to having introduction of disease and the spread of disease will wipe out the entire population because there's no mainland so on that island that coastal area of uh, people who have come in uh, from traveling in many cases many years past uh, obviously invasive species can spread diseases and and you know parasites internal and external that can harm these animals another animal that is on the island is the plowshare tortoise which is even more endangered than the 
radiated tortoise, but they both face similar processes and how they are declining in the population. So spread of disease, poaching, uh, smuggling for import and export. Another thing is that people think, like I said, with the aphrodisiacs and other, you know, Western medicinal purposes, they take these tortoise shells and which is really just made of carotene, same as our hair, same as our fingernails, and that's the same process for elephant tusks and uh, rhino horns. They take these tortoise shells and they make them into traditional medicine, and they believe that by consuming the shell, consuming the actual tortoise itself, will prolong their life and will give them uh, medicinal benefits. And in reality, it's proven that it does not do anything. So why do they go out and they take these animals, uh, they smuggle them illegal? They do. They go through and miles of time to just obtain an animal that in reality does best untouched like every animal so that's another reason why these tortoises decline so their population trend is decreasing and that means that they are being wiped out faster than they can actually reproduce now tons of conservation efforts that are being done in captivity such as uh, my friend Jason Abels who runs the three J's tortoise sanctuary them him and over there they do amazing conservation work with Galapagos tortoises they have an Aldabra and they specifically focus a lot more on the radiated tortoise as well and they're able to repopulate these animals like this little guy right here which I named 11 like you guys know came from Jason also a friend of mine Mike Mike Lorette he is a wildlife biologist and he produced these two babies as well so you know you're able to find these captive animals inside the United States and throughout the world and obviously there is legalities and specifics between if you can cross state lines how you can obtain these animals but obviously when all the requirements are met you're able to purchase these animals and by purchasing and supporting captive breeding of wildlife such as the radiated tortoise you prevent a lot of the exports and uh, imports of these wild animals that are being removed from their native range and brought into the country so i just wanted to share that with you guys uh like i said it's a brief explanation i showed you my tortoises unfortunately i don't have adults that can show you physically but i will put up some pictures towards the end of this video to show you some of jason's animals that he's raising up and his adult animals the mom of some of these babies so it's just really cool to show uh i just wanted to make this quick little video to say that uh it's important to protect what you love uh, these animals are voiceless and people such as myself and other people that you guys follow out there and you guys know of we are the voice for these animals we are here to spread the conservation the message behind what is important what is good to take care of you know a lot of people tend to destroy we have to protect our earth we have to protect nature we have to protect life in general this is our home this is their home and by us stepping into their environment uh, another big thing that like, i forgot to mention is deforestation wipes out pretty much what like an entire part of Madagascar almost every day you know people are clearing land and that impairs lemurs that impairs their native geckos chameleons tortoises and another reason that Madagascar is super unstable is because they change uh, political leaders almost monthly like you know like changing your clothes they go through so many political leaders and political systems that there's not really a protection in place to protect these native animals and to protect their wildlife and plant life and things of that sort so Besides uh, all of that, like I, like I said before, I want to share and spread the message of conservation. I hope you guys enjoyed this brief little video. Uh, it's more of a sit down talk. I don't do these much often, but I want to start, you know, kind of spreading the message more. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video and thanks for watching.